yeah, so, yeah, this series has been going on for a while, and uh, so I'm just gonna stop here since like uh, I can't go on like forever, and yeah, and like the interest in this series uh, also kind of died down a little, and like yeah, I don't want to make it too advanced, and this is a tutorial like not uh, so um. So for this final video, first of all, uh, if you join the Discord server inside of the uploads uh, channel, uh, I'm gonna post a link for this video. But right under that, uh, right underneath that link, uh, there will be a file of uh, a copy of the game. So like, if your game isn't working, you can do the file. But uh, I'm not gonna just leave the video off like that. I'm gonna just like tell you guys more in depth. Like, if you wanna make like smart, like more attacks, uh, how to how to do them. First of all. Um, this, uh, these tutorials are always R6, so you're gonna not only have to turn on R6 and, uh, your game settings, like, R R15 won't work, and, oh yeah, and, uh, if you followed the two-player tutorial from last time, uh, you can remember that, uh, you also gotta make, uh, if a two-player max, so, first of all, um, let me explain some things. So the combat, uh, every time you want to make a new anime attack, you will always make a new animation. You can actually name these animations whatever you want, but uh, you have to like actually remember to name them. And yeah, uh, the script also automatically sets the animation priority. So if you know what prior animation priorities are, you probably don't really have to set them. Uh, so first of all, let me tell you how, how some things work. So every time we want to make a new attack. Go into the combat local script, and this would always be a new attack. Remote fire server, and the name of the attack is always just like telling the server to do a new attack. And yeah, so every time you want to make a new attack, you can like uh, just make another one of these and make an if else statement. For example, here it says uh, if you're pressing down, you're gonna do the down air, and um, if this also means you're in air, so. If you're in the air and you're pressing down, you're gonna do the down air. So, uh, yeah. For example, if you wanted to make a smash attack, you would probably uh, uh, detect first. If you're pressing the mouse button one, and if you're uh, not in the air, because smash attacks uh, have to be in the ground, I'm pretty sure. So, if you want, ever want to cut a smash attack, it would probably be like if you're not in the air and uh, you're not pressing, you're not pressing down. And you're not pressing up, and um, you're and you're pressing like D or A r right when you attack. You do a smash attack, and you could probably look at some other tutorials on like how to like uh, like tech if you're pressing two buttons at the same time. Uh, so yeah, you can do that if you want to do a smash attack. And not only that, uh, also I'm not gonna code this, but like if you guys uh, think that's too advanced could always just do it like if you're right clicking then you do a smash attack instead of like just uh making it like the same time pressing a or d because it's a little advanced so if you ever want to make like for example if i were to make a smash attack where you press the right button to attack uh it would just be this except mouse button 2 is the right button so i'll put mouse button 2 and uh inside of this thing i'll probably delete all of this the tech if you're not there an and then do the attack so yeah um, but every time you do do attack, let me tell you how to like understand it. So let's look at the F2. So you can see we fire uh, the client, which is the player, uh, F2. And this is basically telling the player what animation to play. So, so you see we have an animation, so a combat called uh, F2. So you gotta name this correctly with the animation set here, or it's not gonna work. This is like the startup time, uh, 0 0.05, and uh, yeah, and the overlap params are like what to ignore and what to like include. You probably there's a lot of tutorials on how overlap params work. If you've done ray casting, you probably know how this works too. The hitbox size is how big the hitbox is. Uh, the offset is the offset of the hitbox uh, from the player. So this is the X, Y, and Z. So if you change the Z, it's gonna change if the hitbox is in front or behind the player. The Y changes the hitbox is above or below the player, and the X is if changes if the hitbox is left or right from the player. So yeah, 
And this is for, uh, like, this is for the hitbox. It just tells the player to make a hitbox. And I'm also pretty sure you can make the uh, lingering hitbox too. And I'm pretty sure to make a lingering hitbox, you would put how long it would linger as an extra uh, parameter inside here. Like, if I ever wanted F2 to linger for like 2.2 seconds, I'll put this. So, uh, then, uh, when it, when you do hit someone, you can do the hit function. And, yeah, just the knockback. Oh, remember, my knockback per, uh, formula is kind of bad. It's kind of up to you guys to change it. The percentage that will be added, and the stun time. The reason, also another reason why I'm ending this uh, a little earlier than my pizza tower tutorials that I did a while ago. Because those tutorials, like, honestly, like, uh, like, the later ones weren't really that good. So, yeah, I'm afraid if I keep on, make this going too long, I might make a lot of mistakes. And a lot more bugs will be in the game. This is, uh, how long, uh, after your startup time for you to go back to being able to move again. Because, like, most attacks don't allow you to, like, move while you're using it. And this is basically, like, disconnecting the listener. You should probably have one of these in every single script. Uh... It's like waiting two seconds and you know, disconnect the listener because if if you don't disconnect it, uh, then over time you're gonna have a lot of listeners and your game's gonna lag. So, um, and this basically sending can't input to nil. Uh, just basically just makes your character able to move again. Can't input like if I set it to one, it means your character can't move, but he has a walk speed of one. Set it to zero, your character can't move at all. Uh, and twenty is your character. Uh, your character like can't draw attacks, but they can still like move a little. So this, this, you can change the number if you ever want like a player to move like during an attack. But always make sure to have can't amp to new at least sometime during the episode, at least sometime during like the code. So like, yeah, cause if your character never goes back to being normal, that's not good. So yeah. And if you ever like want the dash attack thing, like where a character like moves by itself even if you don't click anything, you would do this by uh, there's a code inside the script that makes for every single humanoid when they spawn they're gonna have a like, keep moving back the force, which is basically like a force that goes on the player. So you can set this force to uh, this value, and it will just push the player. Remember to enable it too, and disable it because you don't want that to be on the player for the whole time. And yeah, this is a lingering hitbox, so I have to 0.6. And like, the vector, something about the vector force is that like, it, when it pushes on your player, like your player doesn't immediately go at max speed that the vector force wants it to. Play kind of accelerates, so, if you don't want that to happen, you can just do this. It basically just gives the, the player a head start on the velocity to going. So yeah. Uh... So yeah, that's pretty much how like to make a do uh, attack. So yeah, uh, and I'm pretty sure after you change it, you can only do two players. And like having a yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think having if you spawn a uh, NPC in the game, pretty sure you can hit him, but like it won't show in percentage bar at the bottom. So yeah, you could also probably make your own percentage bar effects. Mine uh, is pretty normal, I gotta say. Yeah, the local script is all about controlling, like, uh, like the percentage bar. You can, like, you can change uh, what happens. Like, for example, uh, this is like changing what happens every time you take damage. Like, how the the, tw the tween thing is like, how like every single time uh, your per percentage changes, like, the number like shakes a bit. It's like changes shaking. So yeah, I'm not gonna explain the entire local script though. Camera control, uh. Pretty sure I talked about this in the first tutorial, but you can change the max jumps. You can change uh, the minimum of the camera, like how close the camera is, and the maximum, like how far away the camera max can be. I will probably put the maximum a little smaller. I kind of put mine too big. Well, it kind of depends on how big your map is. So yeah, and I know, uh, I know it's 2D. Uh, I know the script makes it 2D. But I would still recommend like putting barriers, invisible barriers, just in case like uh, your player asks like goes in a 3D world. So yeah. Uh, one thing I would add is in my game, uh, you have to like fall all the way to the bottom in order to die. 
and that kind of takes a long time so you guys should probably make your own blast zones which is like you add a part and if you play attention to that part they just die so yeah uh yeah you should definitely add blast zones because I, I have like no blast zones so you, got, you could go infinite infinitely up if you wanted to so yeah and if you ever like wanted to make a move where like player goes like up like an extra like like an up b uh you'll probably just copy the um the force code from the combat server from the dash attack except instead of making like the force push the player towards your but instead of like making the player like the force be your player uh what player direction right. this is basically like detecting what direction your player is facing you'll just make it like go upwards so yeah i think that's all i have to explain uh can't explain too much because that'll make this video pretty long so yeah oh yeah and the formula for the percentage uh is uh over here this is my percentage it's a little my formula it's a little bad so yeah if you ever want to change anything about the percentage calculation stuff it would be in the fun hit function there's a lot of other stuff in there like particles that play and yeah 